while I was repairing the rear brakes on the car, I decided to do some quickie repairs on the brake booster and master cylinder, which required that I open the hydraulic system, and in turn that required that I bleed the brakes. Getting ready to pressure bleed the brakes on the Morris Miner. This is the adapter that I created from an old master cylinder cap to allow me to hook the pressure line up to the master cylinder. And I'm getting ready to go out here and get the hose and hook it up and we'll put a little pressure on it and make sure everything's holding up okay. Here's the pressure line hooked up, ready to go. I'm gonna go fill the machine up with brake fluid. This would be easier to do up in the air, but none of my lifts will pick this car up. They won't reach far enough in for the skinny frame rails on this car. This is the pressure bleeder. This is a reservoir that has the uh, brake fluid in it under pressure. This is the regulator to determine how much pressure you've got on. They don't usually run about 15 pounds on a modern car. I'm going to keep it down around 10 and see how that works. So let me get my 7 16 inch wrench and see if I can get to the bleeders in the back here. This is the pickup tube that scavenges the old fluid. You hook the rubber tube up to the bleeder before you open it up and there's a suction pump on the machine here the whole thing runs off the shop pressure so there's no electrical connection or anything but, um, I'm getting ready to do the fronts now here's, here's the rig hooked up on the front caliper um, you see air moving through the tube, but that's not air coming from the brake system. That's air being sucked around the threads of the bleeder by the vacuum system. You got to keep an eye on the reservoir level up here while you're at it. So you know when you're done with each wheel. Okay, as you can see, I'm at the bottom of the number four line. You don't want to drain this thing completely. In fact, you can't because there's a steel ball in the side of it that gets sucked down in there and shuts the thing off if you drain too much fluid out. That's to prevent you from getting air back in the system. So I'm basically done with the machine. I'm going to go disconnect it. and check my brakes. Actually, there's another step on this thing. When you're done with it, you have to release the pressure by shutting this knob all the way off. And then there's a pressure release that uh, takes any pressure off the canister so we're back down at zero pounds on the gauge and it's not going to spray fluid all over me when I disconnect it from the car, I hope.